safely describe myself as an African queer woman. And I call myself that because it took me so long to accept that I am different, I would say. I started to feel like I needed to be um, to be among these people that were like me. Because community-wise, everyone was at home and I didn't have anyone to talk to. And then we had, we lost um, some of our trans um, brothers and sisters, we lost um, so many people from the black and Asian minority ethnic group. So I feel like all this and social media and the way they put things added to people's depression, anxiety, and I feel that we should have more uh, platforms that 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 incorporates everybody, not just one part of um, the community that has uh, a platform for everyone to come out and share their stories. I'm pleased to present African Rainbow Family volunteer Vanessa Nisio's story. Vanessa Mosu, I go by she, her. I am representing the African Rainbow Family. African Rainbow Family is a charity organization that supports people seeking asylum and refugees. I live in Cardiff. I just came here, I just relocated to Cardiff. I've been in London um, for some months now. So I'm finding it quite hard trying to adjust, but it's a nice place. Um, professionally, I volunteer for the African Rainbow Family as, a, as an assistant social media coordinator. And also, I am a writer and an activist. I write about personal experiences, my personal experiences. I, I write to keep me sane sometimes. But sometimes, sometimes when I feel sad, I just write. It helps me. It relieves me. So I write articles. Um, most times just journaling. Mm -hmm. It's been very, I don't know, it's been a little bit up and down. I'll say that because at first when it started, I thought it was just something that would maybe go away. But then it kept on going for months. And then um, personally, I, I, for me, I believe some people were, de were deplaced from home because I, um, I was living in a very hostile environment. So at that point, I felt very, very sad living in, having to stay isolated with, with very homophobic people at that point. So I would say that, I don't know, I started to feel like I needed to be, um, to be amongst people that were like me. Because community-wise, everyone was at home, and I didn't have anyone to talk to at first. But then, as time went on, um, the African Rainbow Family made a space for us to come um, together to talk, mostly via virtual meetings, that like Zoom meetings, and I found that it helped me because. Um, I had people that I could talk to, I had people that could share their experiences with me, so I felt like I was not alone. So that's, that's how life has been for me during the pandemic. We had um, 500, approximately 500 members in different branches. Um, there's Leeds, there's Manchester, there's the London branch, and then there's Birmingham branch. Um, uh, basically, it takes care of People, um, people seeking asylum, mostly queer people, now, uh, the people that belong to the LGBT community, and also refugees. They help us with um, our cases. They help, they help with one-to-one -one, uh, mental health sessions. They help with um, 
going with members to to maybe cut hearings that also help um, us um, prepare for our cases like showing us how to put evidence and all that that's what african apart from the african rainbow family services i use the um, micro rainbow yoga sessions i just started it anyway um because i found out that i not just me i think i'm speaking for every other person listening i think um being isolated and not um not having places to go or ways to connect with other people um it's i don't know it's very sad for me it's very sad so i had to find other ways so if african rainbow family is not doing this and i'm feeling depressed or what um or somehow i use the uh, micro rainbow um yoga sessions they normally have yoga sessions they have meditation they have workshops that we um that's meant for asylum seekers and um refugees um what else i think Basically, those are the two organizations I used during this pandemic. I'm very happy actually because it wasn't. It was very hard for me at the beginning of the of pandemic, but with with these services, I it became a bit easier, and I started adapting to the um, virus and knowing that I was not alone, and that there are people like me that are going through the same thing I was going through. You know, to divide ourselves instead of coming together and i feel that if we're going to um make a difference in the community it has to be together so if we're fighting for the rights of uh, of the trans uh, of our trans brothers and sisters we need to come together to fight for them if you're fighting for people of color we need to come together to fight for them we can't differentiate ourselves i feel that's my deepest um, concern about the community and um, um, personally, the Black Lives Matter and Black Trans Lives Matter protest or movement to me is, is a call for justice. I think this year has opened our eyes to the fact that, um, that our, our trans brothers and sisters are not safe and we're not really looking into preserving their rights and um, making them comfortable. I think it has opened our eyes to, to things that might have been happening years back or we were overlooking. I, might, I feel um, it's, it's a fight for inclusion, for equality, for, for recognition and for basic human rights. We should not be treated differently or discriminated against. I think that it, this year just I think this year is just calling for us to just stand together as one and fight for. for um, when I say classes, I meant the fact that because as a queer woman, I don't understand. Um, I might not understand the experiences of a trans man or woman, and instead of trying to understand where they're coming from and what their grievances are, I it's like we try to sometimes differentiate ourselves from them. Take for instance by phobia, the fact that there are some queer women or lesbian women that are biphobic and they have people that would, wouldn't want to associate themselves with bisexual or want to associate themselves with, with um, transgenders or something like that. So that's what I meant when I, I was talking about classes. The online mental health sessions held by the African Rainbow family has helped um, reduce the anxiety that I feel. Um, um, throughout the month of September, we had this um, session where we just come and we just laugh and smile. And you know what the smile does. Giving a smile to everyone helps at least brighten their day. So we have that every, um, every Friday throughout September. Then I normally go out to exercise just have a walk or just jog around the, um, the building. Um, I, like I said at the beginning, I write, so writing helps me. So I just journal what, what my peers are, how my day went, and it helps relieve maybe tension or stress that I'm feeling.
Um, I think that um, doing all those things helped a bit. Like it helped me because uh, um, I know I was feeling very anxious with the whole pandemic and not knowing when it's going to end. But then um, having a place where I could connect with other people and see faces because we're not allowed to um, go visit people. So I, at least I could see them on the screen and it made me feel very com um, comfortable and connected. So I feel if there's any expression I want to give to anyone um, in the community is a smile. A smile is very, it's very comforting. So I, I, I wish that everyone would try to smile more often. I think pride um, to me now and in the near future is celebrating my identity, celebrating uh, um, the experiences I have gone through to be who I am, celebrating community and uh, I think celebrating unity that's what the pride means to me so pride is not just um, one big party it's it's uh, it's celebrating a sense of identity like having a community that you belong pride in fact this year it, it made us um, come together to speak up against things that we we face. So that's what pride means to me. Yeah. I don't think there was any, I think the only difference we had was that we didn't um, have a, um, a pride match or celebration, a big celebration, but then we did it virtually. We did it even through the, the protest, the one we, they had in, in Trafalgar Square for um, Black Lives and also um, Black um, Trans Lives. Um, women. So it wasn't really, I still felt connected, I, feel, I still felt that um, that, that sense of um, community or that um, feeling of going out and being amongst people because it, we had more events online, we had people come out to talk more, to talk more about their experiences. So for us to be able to coexist with other um, sectors or mainstream individuals, we have to make them understand us. I think that's what we do, telling our stories and experiences and letting them know that this is who we are, this is how we are, and that there's nothing that can change us and we're not bad people, we're just human beings. I think it takes time for people to actually understand where we're coming from and to be able to make them understand, and we need to tell our stories more and not just um, stories about relationships, but stories about what we go through, what we struggle with, what our experiences are daily on a daily basis, how we feel or how we have, must have felt and all that. I think when we are able to tell all those things, it will appeal to their understanding. I, I love music, so I have different types of music that makes me happy. Um, African music makes me happy too. I like Nigerian music, Afrobeat, and uh, pop, pop music too. Yeah, yeah music, music in general makes me happy. Except, except um, R&B. <laughs> R&B makes me quite emotional. So. Yeah, but mostly Afro, <laughs> Afro pop. It's good. Uh, mostly action movies. <laughs> action movie and. Documentaries. Um, what else? I, I love to play games too, video games, um, board games, so those kind of things make me happy. And then also being with friends. Uh, my friends, they make me happy. Just talking about life and joking and all that. Just community member. Yes, I feel very hopeful. I believe that since everyone is. Um, speaking up now and people are uh, coming together i feel that there's hope for us in the future i feel that things will be better